Welcome to my channel, Ginger here. If you're deciding on what watercolor set to invest on, then I hope this episode can help you before you jump into that purchase. In this video, I'll compare two watercolor pan sets, the Koritake Gansai Tambi and Sakura Koi. I'll make swatches for a few colors they have in common, then give you some personal thoughts about each brand's vibrance, texture, feel, and dissolvability. In the end, it's up to you to decide which one you like best. Now, the Kuritake Gansai Tambi comes in a set of 12 colors, 18s, or 24, 36, and 48 colors. What I have for this product review is my 36B set. Each color is housed in a good quality plastic pan that's quite substantial in size, which is great, especially if you're using large brushes like the size 8s or 10s. I've used this set before and I still have a lot to last me more projects. It just looks clean right now because I washed these pans one by one so that when we make swatches later, there won't be any contaminants that can mess up our comparison. Okay, so as you may have noticed, each color has a numeric label and Japanese characters. I can't really read this. There's no English translation here, so I had to Google up a color chart to find what shades I'm looking at. Now, the cover of the box has a grid, this empty chart here that you can color in. So if you want to make paint swabs here to guide you in your painting, you can do that here. I pulled my Kuritake from storage and I was surprised to see that some paints were cracked. If this happens to you, don't be alarmed. It doesn't mean that the paint has degraded. Just apply a bit of water on the pan and you're good to go again. Now let's move on to the other side of our product comparison. Here's my 60 piece Sakura Koi watercolor set. First impressions. I love how this comes in handy clamshell packaging, which is perfect for travel. So for those of you who love uh, plain art or who take trips and want to stash art supplies into your luggage, this will be a great option for you. It comes with its own palette divided into wells, which is great for mixing. There are two, two water brushes here too, a small size two round and another one here, it's medium. For those of you who are not familiar with water brushes, now this contraption has a small water receptacle which you can squeeze and when you squeeze the water will wet the brush nibs. The amount of water that squirts out depends on how hard you squeeze a plastic handle. If you don't like synthetic water brushes and would rather work with more professional brushes with long handles, the clamshell has space for that too. Now the configuration of this packaging is really smart and it was so well planned. The set comes with sponges. You can use this to add texture to your work or to maybe pick up excess water in case of accidental spills. I personally don't need it, but it's good to know that it's just there. The Sakura may have 60 colors here, but they're significantly smaller than the Gansai Tambi pans. It's a bit difficult to switch around your brush, especially if you're using a large brush. With Sakura, you're trading pan size for a wider color spectrum, which it may work for some of you who don't want to be bothered with mixing paints. As you observe me painting swatches here, please take note. I wash and wipe my brush between swatches to make sure the pigments are not mixed up unnecessarily. I don't want to confuse you here. I want to make sure that what you see is exactly what the pigment should be for that brand. Now let me give you a bit of feedback. One thing that's very noticeable, the Kuritake colors are very bright. They are deeply saturated and more opaque. The pigments dissolve, so um, as you apply it on this heavy gauge, uh, I'm using Strathmore 400 series paper, but you notice here, the Kuretake, it's not streaky. It actually feels very creamy in my hands and I'm able to glide my brush across the surface without leaving unwanted lines. And so I like how this behaves. It's very easy to manipulate. The Koi, on the other hand, is it's a bit of a chore to play with. 
As I'm moving my brush, the pigments are not dissolving as watercolor is expected to dissolve. As I move my brush, the pigments, they kind of move too, which is perfectly alright if that's the effect you're aiming for. But, but at a certain point, you just want the color to stick to the paper already, which is not what's happening here. Yes, the Cora is responsive to my brush strokes, but if it's too responsive to the point of annoyance. It can be frustrating. Note that with both products, I'm applying my strokes in the same manner. Like I've loaded up more water in the brush before doing the horizontal strokes here. As for these small vertical strokes, my brush is a bit drier and there are more pigments loaded in those strokes. I'm doing it this way because I want to test the opacity and compare the color saturation. Now how vibrant are the colors even when the paint is watered down? That's what exactly what I want to check in this product review. Okay, as a side note, the Kuretake Gansai Tambi is suited for professional artists, for hobbyists, or crafters, or students. I've used this medium before, either alone in my watercolor projects or in tandem with inks or stamp pads or even fluid acrylics for mixed media projects. That's how versatile this is and it goes well with Karen Dashnia color pastels, it goes well with Derwent Intense Pencils or even with Faber-Castell Gelados. Just want to share a bit of trivia. What is Gansai anyway? They call this Gansai Tambi, but what is Gansai? Gansai is a Japanese term that means vibrance. It's used to indicate the kind of watercolor that originates in Japan. While most North American watercolors use gum arabic as binder for its pigments, Gansai has other ingredients besides gum arabic. They have there's a mixture of sugar or beeswax glycerin extracted from animals and sugar syrup starch or any combination of these why they put sugar in my paint i really don't know but for whatever it's worth i love how those ingredients produce sharp colors that stay bright even when watered down let's analyze what we have right now the sakura dried up to a chalky finish if i hold up this chart under my white lighting. I can see that the Kuretake has a bit more luminosity to it. It's not overly glossy but there's some sheen and glow to it compared to Sakura's matte finish. Sakura Koi streaks are also so so obvious here. If I wanted to create lines in my art and achieve this effect, I wouldn't have used watercolors in the first place. Like I would have painted with marker pens or colored pencils instead, right? We use watercolors because we want to create large washes and make pigments flow, but with Sakura here, even if I apply the same amount of water as I did with Kuretake, the paint didn't spread so well. So in terms of blending and dissolvability, I think Kuretake wins a perfect score over Sakura. And what do you think about the pigments? Well, each brand has their own interpretation of the pigment, even if their labels are the same. Like if you notice here, Kuretake's purple looks more red than violet. Sakura's cadmium red looks like red-orange. Sakura's cerulean blue and turquoise blue can easily be confused because they almost look identical. Like what I like about Sakura is their olive green. It's a true olive green in my opinion. Kuretake's olive green looks more like hunter green here. Also, even when the name labels are the same, the coverage is different. Sakura doesn't have the same covering ability as Kuretake. Just pay attention to the swatches. You can see more of the paper underneath the Sakura paints. Whereas with Kuretake, you can see less of the paper and more of the pigments. What exactly does this mean? It means that you'll need a lot more paint layers to fully cover a square inch of paper when using Sakura paint. But for the same square inch, you'll need less Kuritake paints because their covering powers are better. Less covering power means that the paint is more transparent, which is what Sakura is. Higher coverage means uh, the paint is more opaque, which is what Kuritake Gansai is all about. They're more opaque. 
Now it's important to know this so that you can adapt your painting techniques depending on the brand you're using. In terms of price point though, the Sakura is better because it's cheaper. So if you're a beginner and just want to experiment with the medium, you can start with their 24 color pan set without breaking the bank. Okay friends, I've given you the facts and my two cents worth of unbiased unsponsored opinion. I've shown you both the good and the bad in both the Kuretake Gansai and Sakura Koi. I hope this comparison gave you enough info to help you decide for yourself what medium to use for your projects. If you have experienced these watercolors and you'd like to share your thoughts with the art community, feel free to leave comments below. Okay, so thanks for watching this episode of Art That Place and Praise. This is Ginger saying bye for now and see you again next time.